morning, everybody. Welcome to Wish Upon a Coil. Sorry we're a few minutes late, technical difficulties, but we're here. A um, couple things before I turn this over to Costa is one, thank you for your support yesterday with our Wish Wednesday. We did the Bright Stars, uh, Bright Birds, excuse me, and um, we sold out of our panels. We sold out of a couple of uh, bolts of the fabric, and we still have a few more left that we're cutting today. So thank you for the response of uh, the Bright Birds. We really did think that was a good spring slash summer uh, fabric for you. Today is our Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt. It's session two. Before I jump into that, um, I wanted to let you guys know we did the uh, letter on Friday. We had some questions, but right now we are not open uh, during the COVID-19. We're still doing the curbside pickup from 10 to 1, and we're going to continue to monitor this, and we'll look at this as the state gets ready for phase two. But thank you again for your support with the online orders, the phone calls. Um, it just helps tremendously. One of the things we finally did, we've had some great responses to our, our videos here, and that's all because of you, but with Diana and Costa and Lori, with Lori Kent Designs, we've had a lot of views, we've had a lot of questions, we've had people saying, well, where is this, where's this pattern, where's this pattern? We have totally updated our YouTube page. So if you go to YouTube right now and go to Wish Upon a Quilt, you will see all our videos for the last three months. We loaded them in the last two days. So not only will it be on Facebook, but it will now be on YouTube under our Wish page. You can go back, play it, see a design, see an instruction, re-see something on the machine. So all that was done yesterday. So without further ado, we're going to talk about Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt. This is session two. Costa's going to talk about the Hoop Sisters scissors. These are online right now that he'll be using. He really likes this uh, fabric folding pen. He's going to show you that today as well. And he's going to talk about the wool that he's going to use for each one of these blocks. So, Costa, are you ready? I'm ready. Welcome to Hoop Sisters session two. And here is Costa. Hey, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you today. It's an honor to be your teacher. And to be able to help you. Last night, as you know, we don't get our week two, we don't get our weekly uh, designs until during the day. And I was here till about three o'clock. So I know that yesterday, if you've gotten your designs, if you haven't, that's fine. They're in your account. So I'm getting a lot of questions on how to do it. You go to your account on Hoop Sisters and you download your zip file of week two. You should have already downloaded. When inside that zip file, it'll open immediately if you have Windows 10 or your Macs, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. It'll open immediately, and inside that folder are your designs and your instructions, and she's given you PowerPoints also so that you could see pictures of them doing it. Uh, Annie, of course, has been on yesterday. I did not see it because it's a very long video because she goes very detailed. I'm not going to do that today for you. Instead, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks with it. And, and most of you who are, if you need to know how to build a block, you can watch her, of course, but you can also call me and we can do it together over the phone, FaceTime it, whatever. And I'll make an appointment with you. If you're really interested, this is a great way to get interested in Hoop Sisters. Hoop Sisters is known for one thing, and that's quilting in the hoop. Taking each block and doing this wonderful design in the block that will create it a bigger design as we go. So that's really what we'll see today in this week's uh, video. Last week, though, I want to go back because I have my... Um, my list here so that Frank doesn't get upset with me going all crazy. <laughs> Today, you're I'm too late ask, for that. Yeah, I'm going to ask Frank, <laughs> Frank, if you can come up close to me, I want them to get an idea of the four blocks that you they will do this week uh, for week two. Now, let's talk about, as Frank gives you some visuals on it, these blocks are can be turned in four different ways. You are going to do three turns of this. In your fabric one, you will do 12 blocks. And in your fabric two, you will do four blocks. Forgive me. Let me go back. Yes, I, I think that's wrong. 
uh, you will do, um, yes, you will do, uh, let's go back, I'm, I'm come across a um, thing, but you will do several in one and only four in the other. All together, it comes out to be 12 blocks, so I think you're going to do eight blocks in one color and four in the other. So eight blocks in orange, I think. Now here's what happens. When you do the block, let's take this one for example, you'll do three, two colors with it going two ways. And then the third color, it goes the other. Please check your instructions. As you can see, I was right. Eight color, eight of them in your fabric one. My fabric one is orange, so you'll do eight. I was able to research a little bit and realize that this picture is incorrect. She wanted the picture of block 26 and she accidentally put one of the other ones in there. But this is what it is. You can see that they either mirror each other. So please watch your block numbers as you're taking your files down. Again, this is what you're, you're, you're created so far. Last week you should have had eight of these four of each one, and then you will have eight of one color, and it's still the same design, except in your fabric two, you will only have four of them. And they're going just another direction. But watch what you're doing so that you're doing it in the right one. She has two different colors on her files too, especially in the Jeff files. Okay, so once again, very simple. Some of them I've done in nine inch blocks so you can visually see it, beautiful quilting. Today I wanna to show you something though, as you say, we're going to, one of the things I'm finding is that when I was trimming my, uh, my Hoop Sisters blocks, I realized that I really liked using my rotary mat. I was able to turn it. I was able to, now, we do have a couple of these. I bought this here at Wish Upon a Quilt. It's our Ulfa mat, and um, a rotary mat, it's an excellent one. I love Ulfa anyway, it's self-healing, and it does, we do have them here. I think we have two or three here, but I didn't realize until I started this mystery quilt how much I enjoyed that. So that's the first thing I want to get to back to that. But when I'm cutting, that's why I have this. This is my trimmer by George. Frank was pretty um, shocked with it because we didn't have any. But we have them now. And we want you to order them here. And we, um, these are the trimmer by George. A lot of my hoop sisters have them. If you are a new hoop sister, you absolutely must have this. Because it's the only way we're going to be able to cut that uh, stuff out from the back and in your batting. So all you're left with just putting just the front. And I'll show you that in just a minute. All right, so last week I was using something really perfect. As you could see, and it's gonna happen next week too, you're gonna do a lot of piecing in the hoop. And what we say piecing in the hoop is you're gonna seam a piece of fabric and then you're gonna flip it and put it in its right place. So you're gonna use your fingernail or do whatever you can to make that line nice. Well, I have just discovered through a friend of mine, this stuff called, uh, Frank just pulled it out for you, the Fabric Folding Pen by Clover. Beautiful, let me tell you what it is. Inside this, you put some water and you put five to six drops or four to six drops of this stuff. Now the stuff that's in there really is a starch Thing, something that has some kind of starch in it. They call it a magic solution, but I think it does have some form of starch in it. Because here's what's going to happen. I'm going to use mine here. And I haven't really, I don't know if it's a thing. So let's say I've seamed this here and I'm going to wet it with my pen once I get my, my solution going on it. needs to come out. There it is. So now, it dried up a little bit. There it is. So you see the wet, uh, look at this Frank for me. 
And I'm gonna, let's say that's where my stitching was. So now I'm going to do this right there. I'm not gonna have to play with it. And now it's coming out good because I got it going. So there it is. Now I've stitched it. I'm gonna place it over there. It dries beautifully because it's starched. And then it folds beautifully right in the hoop. And it stays like that. So it's a great way. So let's say you stitch it. You don't put it on the outside. You just put it on the end and it stitches beautifully. I mean, or it, and then it'll stitch down and it'll fold and it'll make those really cool folds right there. Even if you're using wool, okay? Even if you're using wool, that's where the problems will lie with a lot of you. Some of you who don't want to use wool in this particular mystery quilt, I'm noticing that it's really the time to use it. As you can see, the dimension is absolutely beautiful. And I don't want you not using wool, Frank. I don't want them not using wool because you don't know, it's hard to handle. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it is a little bit harder to handle. But I have spent a lot of time trying to perfect it. Last year, I came up with this idea that we could use this water-soluble topping and we could place it on top so that our presser foots don't get caught in, especially your 500 and 550E. We cannot variate that, that um, presser foot. So in your 15,000, I can do that. So anyway, let me show you a little bit about the wool. So let's go over here, Frank, real quick. And let me show you a new thing I'm doing with the wool. With the wool, I take and I try desperately to show, this is my, just cut right off the bolt or off my little stuff. You can see it's really thick there. Can you see that? That's where your troubles will lie. That's where your presser foot. So Annie suggests that we press it a quarter of an inch in. I'm gonna tell you, yes, here's the problems I came up with, and this is my heavy handedness. I put my iron to a certain degree, wool especially, and I was seeing that the sole plate of my iron was getting caught on it, and I would have to play with that. Well, about three nights ago, I decided I've had so much to do, I want to get my blocks done. I have now decided that I'm going to use my applique sheet that I bought from Wish Upon a Quilt called Fusimat. It's a Fusimat. Um, I have several of them here. I, I, th these are two other applique sheets. I'm just showing you that there are other ones that I bought here. I'm not sure what this one is. And like I said, throughout the years, I've bought several applique sheets. You can use it with any. But I'm going to use my Fusimat because the Fusimat is my favorite because inside you can see through it, number one, a complete see-through. And you can see you can, it, it, it spreads the heat out in such a way. I don't know, the Sharon Bradley has done a wonderful job in figuring this out. So here we go. We're going to go over here. I'm going to take this so that it doesn't have to mess up my iron. And I'm going to show you all how I'm going to do it real fast. And I don't want this to go. Let me go. Uh, let me go. I'll do it to about wool. It's not gonna really matter now. And I'm only gonna take the side of my iron and just go right there. It's just getting hot though, so. And there it is. And I'm just going to catch all. This is where I would love to use a round mat, as <laughs> an so ironing mat. With it. As you can see, it's just getting hot. So I'm going to try this. And you can see, I want those ends without messing with that center to be on. This is where my strength really lies, is down here. So I can really. Mm -hmm. It's just. I love it. And it's not sticking to my iron. I'm not having a problem, and I'm controlling it. 
I'm going to do this just a little bit more because my iron was not hot. And I... Just a little bit. And the fusing mat does really good in controlling. And here we go. I want that down as much as possible. And you can see, we just want the center of the wool, guys, to be... Is the strap crazy? Yeah, no, it's hard. I can feel it. Okay, and there it is. And it's nice and thin and controlled, as you can see. All right? So now... After I've done that, I've laid it over here on my 15,000, as you can see. And there it is. I've put one already over here. And now, this is the most important thing. To stop flagging, you want to make sure, I don't, I'm not going to tell you to hold into it and put your finger under there. I'm just telling you to smooth it as it goes. So now we're going to do our little thing. Don't let it get under there. Look at what I'm doing. And there's that zigzag. I'm making sure that I have, I have cut this wool at whatever, a quarter inch smaller than your block. So if you're a nine inch block like mine, it's eight and three quarters. And I am very particular because you don't want this wool and look how smooth and beautiful this machine is going. I'm telling you, this 15,000. Now, let me stop real quick, Frank, and show them that right here, I have got these magnets on. If you watch Annie's video, she uses her 15,000 all the time. So Annie Moody, who is the designer of this quilt, she's in love with the 15,000, and she uses it. And so this is the magnets will stop you from, you will not have to use hoop grip. If you're using another machine, like your um, baby locks and your brothers, I suggest you use hoop grip within the middle of those um, of those hoops. So you put that hoop grip in there. You can see, and if you have a little bit of wool hanging out, you'll just snip it because you don't want it in your seams because it's going to be hard to put it together. When that wool is ironed down perfectly you won't have a problem getting it stuck. Also, come around here for me, Frank. Let's say, and I'm gonna talk about this quilt in terms of Janome, in terms of Janome. And this, in our 15,000, does variate the, the presser foot. So I can go in here to my settings, which is right here, go into my settings, go into the embroidery of it. And now I can check and see that I can change the embroidery hoop, uh, foot height, forgive me. Let me come around this side. Yes, please. And you can see that I can change that, Frank. And I always like it to go about a 2.0, just to raise it so it's not gonna get caught in that wall. Oh. And also, also, Frank, the other thing is, I don't want, I don't want it to get caught. And this machine is so precision and so robotic. It is, it's, it's just enough. Also, I'm going to keep my foot up because when I lay my fabric, I don't want that fabric flagging. You see? So now you can see how beautiful it's going to stitch. And sometimes I'll take my um, stiletto, anything that's in my hand, people, and I just pull it so that it's going to be nice and uh, taut. I don't want that, that wool to flag. Do you know what I'm saying? Flag together. Like now when it gets up here, it has that possibility. And I know I've seen Lee Cloud do it. She puts her hand down in there and she's smoothing it out. Don't be afraid. Keep your eye on it, ladies. Don't go to the bathroom. Don't leave it go. When you have that wool in there, you got to babysit it. And there it is. It's just, it, it adds so much to the to Loop Sisters. I hate for you not to use it. So use your application sheet with it. Use what you need to do. And I will say this. This is our Quiltmaker Memory Craft yes, 15,000. 15, we only have one left. 
And, and this is it. And we are going to be doing a very, very, very aggressive pricing for this machine to help with our Hoop Sisters uh, session. Today is session two. Costa yes. will be back next Thursday and, for session three. And in honor of Hoop Sisters quilt, um, I talked to Frank last night, mystery quilt. We are, uh, those of you that are wanting to go up to a, um, from the 500 or the 550E, and really get a sewing machine and an embroidery machine that's top notch. This is, of course, our 15,000. I forgot to put the light on, Frank. This is some lady, uh, we just sold uh, a, a 9450 just because of this light. <laughs> right. And so it does add more. But anyway, this is, you'll watch the videos from Annie Moody, and she is using, she can't sell the machine because Hoop Sisters is non denominational, as we say. But I know for a fact she's using this, and she has created a lot of her designs on the artistic digitizer, Frank, using it through this. And this 15000 is a special classroom pricing. Absolutely. Now I'm ready to lay my fabric, and then I'm ready to go in here and turn off my cutter so that I can do my quilting, pull my bobbin thread up, all I would have to do on this machine, not on the 550E, the 550E you still have to use your crank wheel and pull it up, but for this one, you just use your uh, needle up, needle down, take a tweezer, and pull your bottom thread up, your bobbin thread up. So I know this this is lasted a little longer than Frank once when we started about three or four minutes late because I was uh, trying to set up here, but Please know that Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt is a way for you guys to go into something more serious, more beautiful, and really see quilting in the hoop at the best it can be. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of this. I don't even know. She has not shown the certified teachers at all. We're not allowed to see, just like in any of them. We're not allowed to see Mystery Quilts because I've got too big of a mouth. She won't show it to me. And I get it. I would tell y'all all about it. But... I'm in awe that all these things will come together and make a beautiful quilted design. And one last thing, Frank, we talked about thread with Lori, mm -hmm. and Lori and I decided that the contrasting thread against this grunge is very good. Dottie Fiddleman uh, wrote me and couldn't make a decision. I'm going to use her name because she's very talented herself, and she couldn't make a decision, and we went on and said, use the contrast, Dottie, because... I think in this, it's very important against your fabric if you're using grunge. We want to also remind you that Lori is here. Lori wants to hear from you guys in the way of appointments. We want you to come and get your fabrics from us. Make sure she, she really has great ideas with color. I never would have thought of orange and purple. She called me up and said, I want to do this. And she came up and it's gorgeous. So once again... Please come by to Wish Upon a Quilt for all your Hoop Sister needs. We are here. I'm a certified teacher. Frank is willing. We're going to be advertising the 15000 a little bit more. We're going to be talking about it online. And we really do want to sell this floor model to you. So those of you who want it. And that is it. Have a great week. Work on your blocks. You do have a lot. You have 12 blocks, but they are so much fun. So much fun. See you next Thursday. See you next Thursday with Hoop Sisters. But don't forget, you're going to see me this uh, Sunday. Sunday at 1 o'clock, Frank's going to post a video for me. We hope we'll have a new machine. We hope, 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 hope. Take so, care. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye. All this video will be on our YouTube channel this afternoon. And don't forget, stay safe, stay connected, tell someone you love them, and make something beautiful with your genome.